Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are previewing Tesla's Q1 earnings report. We have the consensus estimates to go through, and then I'll go through my numbers as well, and some of the key points that I'm watching for for earnings, which again happened this week on Wednesday, April 29th, after market close. Tesla stock kicking off earnings week really strong today, finishing up 10.1% to $798.75. That compared to the NASDAQ up 1.1%. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the numbers here. This will be easier to follow if you are on YouTube, but I'll do my best for the audio listeners as well. Quick preface here before we look at the numbers, we are going to discuss the fact set consensus estimate. As a reminder, the reason that I like to look at these is because this is going to drive the media headlines after Tesla reports. I don't necessarily care what the estimate is, aside from the potential impact that those headlines may have on sentiment. Now this used to affect Tesla a lot more in the past. I think Tesla's starting to move beyond that stage where it is so influenced by those headlines. In fact, we even saw it shift the other way around for the delivery and production report. You may remember, as we talked about at that point in time, Reuters initially led with a negative headline because Tesla had missed the fact set consensus, but then the stock after hours was up, I don't know, 10% or something like that. And obviously a negative headline paired with the stock moving to that degree really doesn't make sense. You can't say they missed estimates if the stock is up 10%. So in that case, we saw Reuters actually update their headline. Things like that aren't out of the question, but for that initial quick five second reaction, fact set, at least for the media, is often where that reaction is coming from. And then you've got a bunch of algorithmic traders that are trading based on Tesla's results versus whatever they have in their input for their algorithm. So all that being said, I think it's helpful to look at those estimates and compare where there may be potential upside surprises or potential downside surprises. The other variable that we have this quarter to look at is Tesla's company compiled consensus estimate. So this is a second consensus in addition to the fact set consensus. This is compiled by Tesla from 21 different analysts covering the stock, and it does vary pretty significantly from the fact set consensus. My guess is that the fact set consensus is what is going to be used by the media, and the company compiled estimate is more in line with what Wall Street actually expects. These may still change over the next couple of days before earnings, but they should be pretty close to final at this point. Last thing I'll say here, and then we'll look at the numbers. The quarterly results this quarter, I don't think really matter that much. I think there's a couple areas which we're going to talk about that are important, but Wall Street as a whole has shown that they're extremely willing to look past Q1 and even Q2, and the production shutdowns that we experienced in Q1 limit Wall Street's ability to take these numbers that we get on Wednesday and use them as a baseline for future numbers. We know that the market is always forward-looking, but those results, the actual results, often help them crystallize their forecast for the future. In this case, because of the exceptions around this quarter, it doesn't help as much, so these numbers are less valuable to Wall Street than they normally would be in a normal quarter. Plus, it's harder to forecast, so the error bars are probably wider, meaning people may be less surprised by a surprise. All right, so looking at the numbers here, on the left is fact set, that is from April 26th. In the center, that's the company compiled consensus from April 25th. And then on the right are my estimates from today. We'll go through the lines here, but overall you can see that while there is some variance, overall things are pretty in line between FactSet, the company compilation, and my estimates. Starting off with revenue, FactSet is at 6.1 billion, the company compilation at 5.8 billion, and then my estimate right in the middle there at 5.9 billion. If you're doing any of your own modeling and curious how that breaks down for me, I have total automotive at 4.94 billion, total energy at 457 million, and then services and other at 518 million. Next up, we have deliveries. Obviously, we know Tesla reported 88,400 with the Q1 delivery report. Usually, they under-report on that, so I'm estimating about 120 more deliveries at 88,520. Fact set is at 88,990, so clearly some analysts haven't updated for fact set. And then the company compiled is at 88,070, so under what Tesla reported. There are two reasons I'm even showing that delivery line. The first is to show how up-to-date these consensus estimates are. Obviously, they're pretty close to what Tesla actually announced as delivered, so they're clearly updated after that. Though, they aren't exact, so there may be some analysts that were rounding or did not update. And then the second reason is because I'm falling in between the fact set estimate and the company compiled estimate for deliveries. I think it makes a little bit more sense why I'm falling in between for revenue as well. Next is gross income or gross profit. This is the revenue minus the cost of goods sold for Tesla. This is their income prior to accounting for sales general and administrative costs research and development, and then any restructuring or other costs, which are always kind of a mystery. We'll just have to see if Tesla has any this quarter related to the shutdown or something else, but for now I'm modeling it at zero. So again, on this line, I'm coming in between fact set and the company compiled estimates at 975 million for gross profit versus fact set at just under a billion. 
and the company compiled at 905 million. That being said, I am a little bit more optimistic on profitability, so the gross profit divided by revenue. I'm at 16.5% versus FactSet at 16.3%, and the company compiled estimate at 15.5%. This is the line that I'm going to be most focused on, because I think this gives us the potential for the most forward-looking information due to the ramp-ups from Model 3 in Gigafactory Shanghai this quarter, and Model Y in Fremont. As you ramp up production, costs of goods sold on those early production units are going to be higher. You have fewer units produced to spread time-based depreciation and amortization across. That increases your cost of goods sold per unit. That hurts your margin. And then you have yet to obtain the lower costs that arrive through increased production efficiency as you increase production. So that's why we see the margin forecast here falling from a fact set consensus to 16.3% from Q4's actual gross profit margin of 18.8%. Now we have to break that down a little bit because that total gross margin has regulatory credits included, it has energy margin, and then it has services, which actually ends up being a negative margin business usually. All those are important factors, but this quarter specifically, what we want to know is automotive gross margin excluding regulatory credits, because that's going to give us the most insight into how well, from a cost perspective, the ramp is going for Gigafactory Shanghai and for Model Y. In my forecast, I have $140 million for regulatory credits. That's up from $133 million last quarter. The reason for that is because Tesla said they had $140 million of deferred revenue from regulatory automotive credits in their 10K filing. The prevailing line of thinking is that that is due to credits earned in 2019 from the Fiat Chrysler emissions credit deal that Tesla has. So I'm modeling for that and nothing more. The reason I'm not forecasting for any more, even though that deal with Fiat Chrysler is supposed to be $2 billion over the next couple of years, is because I don't think in this environment a lot of automakers are going to be really seeking to snatch up ZEV credits at this point in time. They're definitely going to push off those purchases as long as they can in this type of an environment. So I don't think Tesla would be selling any, and as it applies to that Fiat Chrysler deal, if they have flexibility, I'm sure they would love to push that to the back half of the year. That would allow them time to wait and see if the European Union relaxes their emissions requirements due to the added stress that that will put on automakers, specifically on European automakers, during this time, which is already pretty dire. So I'm at $140 million if they recognize that deferred credit. I wouldn't be surprised if they held off on at least a portion of that until Q2. But obviously these credit sales are always a wild card. So back to my main point here, if we take that $140 million of regulatory credits off, then my automotive gross margin excluding credits for this quarter is forecast at 18.5%. That is down 240 basis points from Q4's 20.9% automotive gross margin excluding regulatory credits, but this is probably where I vary most significantly from the Tesla company compiled consensus estimates. That is showing an automotive gross margin X credits of 16.8%. So again, that's a 410 basis point decline from Q4's 20.9%. I'm much higher there at 18.5%, and that's what's driving my margin forecast at a total level higher than the consensus from Tesla's company compilation. I want to go one layer deeper here and talk about the assumptions going into that 18.5% estimate, because again, I think this is the most important number we're getting this quarter. To make my estimate, I have segmented deliveries into four buckets. We have combined Model S and X from Fremont, we have Model 3 from Fremont, then Model 3 from Gigafactory Shanghai, and finally Model Y from Fremont. In my assumptions, I have small sequential declines in margin from Fremont. For S and X, it's about 170 basis points. For Model 3, only 30 basis points. Basically, my logic there is a little bit lower volume and small impact from the shutdown, but I'm hoping that's pretty reasonable for Fremont. Then where it gets interesting is we bring in the Gigafactory Shanghai deliveries for Model 3. I'm estimating those at about 15,000 deliveries, we know production was about 16.6 thousand, and then I'm estimating those to be at about 10% margin. We know that in Q4, Tesla delivered fewer than 1,000 vehicles from Gigafactory Shanghai, and Zach Kirkhorn said the margin on those were negative, so I'm expecting that to flip to positive this quarter. And then for Model Y out of Fremont, I have that at a negative 20% margin on 1,600 deliveries, which is a big wild card because Tesla didn't actually break out Model Y deliveries from Model 3. So those are the two big wild cards, and I have relatively low numbers in there. 10% for Gigafactory Shanghai Model 3s, negative 20% for Model Y, and I'm still ahead of the street automotive gross margin X credit estimate by 170 basis points. I know it took a lot of math to get us here, but the important point here is that if Tesla can hit my numbers from an automotive gross margin X credit perspective, 
then what that likely means is that Tesla is way more profitable early on in their ramp up than what Wall Street is expecting. And that is where Wall Street will take their forecasts going forward and adjust them upwards. That's where I'm talking about that base being important and this quarter not providing a lot of opportunity for those bases, but this I think is one of them. I also think that there is a lot more opportunity for positive surprise here than negative surprise because if Tesla misses those gross margin forecasts, whether they miss mine or they miss the streets, well, it's easy to write that off as being part of the production ramp for Gigafactory Shanghai or for Model Y or for both. And obviously the expectation would be that as Tesla ramps those up, margin will of course improve. So I think the negatives, the true negatives around a poor number here are pretty low, but the true positives around a beat on this line are very, very positive. That would demonstrate a lot of things. It would demonstrate Tesla's ability to ramp both quickly and profitably, as well as doing it on multiple product lines at the same time, while also facing a global pandemic. Now, whether or not Tesla hits these numbers is anybody's best guess, but if they do, I think a lot of reason for excitement. For what it's worth, if we hold my Fremont margin assumptions, and I take Giga Shanghai numbers down to zero margin rather than positive 10, that would drop my auto margin X credits down to 17.1%, still slightly above the 16.8% from the company compiled consensus estimate. Dropping Model Y then down to negative 35% instead of negative 20%, would bring me all the way down to that 16.8% estimate. So this is definitely a line item that we'll be coming back to once the actuals are out to see what we can learn. All right, so back to the other lines here and we'll go through these pretty quickly, but for earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization or EBITDA, I have that at 589 million versus the fact set consensus of 656 million. So I'm a bit lower there. The company compiled consensus did not have an estimate. I'd imagine I'd be in between the two if it did. Next, I'm projecting a small operating loss, just negative $11 million, versus the fact set consensus, negative $13 million, and the company compiled consensus, negative $135 million. Then for net income, I'm projecting a small loss there as well, negative $21 million from a non-GAAP perspective, negative $246 million from a GAAP perspective, leading to earnings per share on a non-GAAP basis of negative $0.11, cents, or earnings per share on a GAAP basis, negative $1.34. So overall, I'm not expecting profitability, though if there were some huge regulatory credits or a big beat on gross margin, I wouldn't say it's impossible this quarter, just unlikely. For those of you on audio that can't see this, the fact set EPS non-GAAP consensus is negative 27 cents, and then GAAP is negative 90 cents, while the company compiled consensus from a non-GAAP perspective is negative 35 cents, and from a GAAP perspective, negative $1.56. Then for free cash flow, so many variables here, it's so hard to estimate but I'm at negative 478 million, while FactSet is at negative 329 million, and the company compiled estimate at negative 527 million. So pretty much everybody here expecting cash drain, largely because of Tesla's overproduction versus deliveries. In subsequent quarters, when that inventory ends up being delivered, that'll be a cash benefit for Tesla, and that free cash flow will come back and turn positive. So to summarize the numbers here, and then we'll move on to the other things I'm watching for this quarter, on the numbers though, I mostly have Tesla missing versus the fact set estimates. I have them missing on revenue, earnings per share, and free cash flow. But on the other hand, I have them beating all the estimates from the company compiled consensus. I would again emphasize the variability this quarter, but from what I have in here as my forecast, this would project out to negative media headlines, but likely a positive reaction from Wall Street if my numbers were accurate. Again, we may also see fact set numbers change before the official announcement. And based on Tesla's compiled estimates, I think those would likely come down rather than go up. Now that's where we're at today with the numbers, but that's just one element of what we're going to get on Wednesday. We have the shareholder letter and we have the earnings call and Tesla's going to discuss things that are forward looking. Those things to me and I expect of this quarter to Wall Street especially versus previous quarters are going to be the most important factors on the call. So a few things that I'm looking for here. Number one, what does Tesla do around guidance? We've been talking about this for about a month now, and in past videos, I've laid out the path that Tesla has to still achieve that 500,000 delivery guidance for the year, even though the current fact set consensus estimate for the year is at 454,000 deliveries, and the company compiled estimate is only at 403,000 deliveries for 2020. Clearly, Wall Street is expecting a miss on this, but if Tesla does reaffirm that 500,000 plus delivery guidance for the year, I think that will be the biggest factor in the reaction to the earnings report. We did have some news potentially relevant to this today, and I think we'll probably come back to this topic tomorrow. 
but we know that Tesla was planning to restart production on May 4th from their U.S. facilities. The Alameda County, which is where Fremont is located, shelter-in-place order, had been in place until May 3rd. We have news today that this will be extended at least through the end of May. So while it does appear that Tesla could still restart production on May 4th, under being a federally essential business, I'm sure it's not coincidental that they chose that May 4th date right after the shelter in place for the county that Fremont is in was expected to expire. If that May 4th date slips to June, for example, obviously the path to 500,000 plus deliveries becomes much more difficult. So if Tesla knows that as part of their plan by Wednesday, then I wouldn't expect a reaffirmation and they may simply choose to remove guidance. If on Wednesday, May 4th is still the plan, then I believe we could potentially see a reaffirmation of guidance, though I would still be sort of 50-50 on the likelihood of that. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla just didn't put anything about guidance in their note similar to what we saw with the delivery and production report. Obviously, then somebody on the earnings call would be asking about that, and Tesla could give a more hedged answer like we're still doing everything that we can to meet deliveries, but there's a lot of uncertainty around that right now. So annual guidance is the number one thing I'm looking for. I don't expect them to give any sort of guidance for Q2, other than their now standard guidance on cash flow and profitability, saying that those should be positive going forward, with the possible and notable exceptions of temporary negative numbers during production ramps. Obviously, that exception would potentially cover Q2. So guidance is probably the number one thing in this entire earnings that I'm looking for. Obviously, any commentary they can add around the macro environment as a whole right now and then anything on Model Y ramp-ups in production, how that's going. Gigafactory Shanghai, how that's going. Obviously, we have some reporting there, but would love to see Tesla address it. And then I'm looking for updates on Autopilot, how the core rewrite is going, whether or not any of that is implemented in the traffic control update that we just had, or when Tesla expects that to be completed. And then I think something a lot of people are forgetting about, the solar roof. Thankfully, it looks like the solar roof question that we had pushed for will make it into the top five on say.com. Super happy with those top five questions, at least as they stand right now. So thank you all for your help in getting those in order. I think they're much better questions than last quarter. And of course, that's sort of the last thing that I'm looking for here from earnings is the answers to these. Really all of them, but of course, including my question about the long-term growth rate and whether or not four plus million vehicles in 2025 and 20 plus million vehicles in 2030 is in line with Tesla's aspirations. Analysts are wildly under forecasting that longer term vision, in my opinion. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you're looking for from earnings. Let me know what your numbers are. If you have any questions on my numbers, I'd be happy to address them. So let me know in the comments. And while you're at it, make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications and following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. That's it though. I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, April 28th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.